Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in college football top 10 YouTube Facebook exclusive. This ain't on the podcast. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. You can find everything you need to about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, you can find all of our social media stuff. We're on Facebook. We are on Twitter. We are on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on Facebook, hit that like button. Share the show out. Tell your buddies about it. We appreciate you being here with us. We're going to go over our college football top 10 after week number eight. Or no, after week nine. No, eight. What, what week is this? Week nine. This was week nine. Golly, man. This is crazy. After week nine. That is bananas. That's all the undefeated teams are eight and oh. We are, they are on bye week. We are two-thirds of the way through the college football season. Can you believe that? Yeah. That's insane. All right, so uh, the show. Exactly. Yeah. I know. Now, you, you're right. You're right. We're getting there, which means next week we start doing our Tuesday night uh, reaction to the college football playoff rankings. Holy crap, is that going to be fun? <laughs> uh, the show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. You can go check them out over at tunicatravel.com. Let's fire into this thing. Of course, this is a shorter uh, episode of the show. I'm going to start with my top 10. I'm going to go from 10 to 1. Number 10, I've got the Auburn Tigers. They got two losses, both of which are on the road. Both of which were really close. Came down to some explosive plays here and there. I, I think Auburn's pretty good. So number 10, Auburn. Number 9, I kept Oklahoma in. I think they showed some real fight. They, they could have just let that thing get out of hand. That could have been an Ohio State kind of loss, which would have kept them out of the playoff. I think, Ohio, or I think Oklahoma is still pretty good. So I went ahead and, and kept them in. I really, like I wanted to knock them out for Utah, but I want to see Utah beat Washington first. And then we'll see what I like after that. But So Utah, not in my top 10. Uh, number eight, I've got Baylor. I think Baylor's really good. I think they have not been like a, a uh, world beater by any stretch of the imagination, but they have done everything that they are supposed to do, and they have looked insanely impressive. I've got Baylor at number eight. I want them to beat uh, one of the... I want them to beat another team first. I want them, I want to see what's going on next week. And then see what's going on, uh, which it's not going to matter because at number seven, I've got Georgia. At number six, I've got Florida. we got the cocktail party coming up. I think these two teams are very similar. I think Florida has better quarterback play right now. Like, I, I never would have thought that I would ever say that Kyle Trask has been a better quarterback than Jake Fromm. But I think this has a lot to do with Georgia's offensive coordinator. Uh, well, yeah, and Dan Mullins as well. Yes. Oh, 100%. Like, Florida, Florida's playing lights out, and they get all their boys back this week. Like, they, they are getting, you know, Quadarius Tony is coming back, and he is a playmaker on offense. Like, th this offense uh, has looked good in the meantime, but just imagine with one more playmaker. Like, that's they're, they're going to be really, really good. And now, of course, the top five. I've got five Penn State. Not super efficient on offense. That defense is lights out. I do like Penn State. So I'm, I'm curious what they're going to look like going up against Minnesota, going to Ohio State, et cetera. I, I want to I see more. I love it. Uh, Penn State at five, Clemson at four. They're just dominating everything in their way, and there's no real way to tell whether or not they can do this against decent competition because you're not going to see it until we get to the playoff. Uh, number three, I've got Alabama. Looked insanely better than I thought they would with Mac Jones at quarterback. Now, granted, it was against Arkansas, but there have been, you know, a couple of teams that have had problems with Arkansas this year, <laughs> Texas A&M. Uh, you know, I, I, it's not that I thought Arkansas was going to turn a corner or anything. I just didn't know if this football team for Alabama would fall apart without Tua being back there. And instead, I mean, Mac Jones goes out, throws for 300-something yards. Uh, the defense looks absolutely like that. That defense played better than they have. And, yes, it was Arkansas. I get that. But they, they did play better than they have at any point this season. Ever since Tua went out, uh, the defense has looked like they realized they needed to step up. And I don't know if that's a mentality thing, but either way. Number two, I've got LSU. Uh, there's no real difference for me between two and one. Uh, LSU has the better wins. Ohio State has looked significantly more dominant. Uh, Ohio State 
I've got it one. They're just on another level. LSU, three top 15 wins at the time of the game, or three top 10 wins at the time of the game. Uh, Ohio State, though, is just on another level right now. And I, I would love to see Ohio State LSU in a national championship game. Like, I, I, I thought I would be bored by that. And maybe I was wrong. Why would you be bored by that? Those are they're the two best teams in the country right now. I don't think anybody can argue anything different. I think I think it's just the helmet thing. I think it's the the old BCS. Uh, I, I don't know what it is for me. It's like a personal thing. I don't know. But if if you look at it, just the matchup itself now, like I'm I'm talking myself back into it because I thought I don't want to watch these two teams play each other. Like this is bleh. I'd like that's, to see our wrong. offense against their defense. I would love to see everything that is, about that. That is now. speed on speed. Yeah. Like nobody's business. Now I think their offense scores every every drive almost. Uh I'd like to see the second half of that game. Yes. Where Dave Randy can see if he can find some adjustments to stop. But you got that right. All right. So uh so recap. Well, I'll recap mine at the end. You can recap yours at the end as well. Uh go ahead. Give me your uh give me your time. Uh, ours is drastically different, man. I, we thought okay. they might be pretty close. They're they're not close at all. Um my number ten team, I think they deserve to be here. They play in a big boy conference and they've beaten some good teams so far. It's Minnesota. It's absolutely deserved to be here. They might not be here next week, but they're here right now. Number nine, I've got Oregon. They're a one-loss team to an Auburn team that I think is really, really good, and and I think that they still deserve to be in the top ten. They've played some hard-fought close games, and uh, and and their one loss is on a neutral site to, to Auburn. Number eight, I've got Auburn. I think Auburn is a really good team, and they've been to two of the – maybe top five hardest places to go on the road and play in all of college football. Yeah. Definitely two of the top ten. And that's their only losses. And they're one score losses. So nobody's housed them. Nobody's nobody's trounced them. And and they were in both of those games to the very end. I think they're still a top ten team. And I think by the end of the season, if they finish with this record as only two losses, it'll be an incredible finish. Number seven, I've got Florida. Florida's one loss is to LSU in Death Valley in the craziest atmosphere we've seen in decades. Um, that that is a that is a hard pill to swallow, and part of me thinks they should be higher. And and, and next week I might kind of look and see how things go. Um, but uh, but but I I really like Florida. My biggest issue is Florida doesn't have like, well I guess beating Auburn, pretty big win, but they've got one big showcase win so far. Next week, they'll have an, have an opportunity to have another one. Six, I've got Clemson. Clemson is what they are. They're an undefeated team in a Power 5 conference that might be the sixth best conference in the country, maybe. Mountain West might have something to say about that. Um, they AAC Clemson might. that conference, and the American beats the hell out of that conference. Mountain West probably hangs with them tit for tat. Uh, it's just bad. But Clemson's really good at football, and they're just not going to ever be tested. Number five, I've got the Baylor Bears. I do this strictly on resume, okay? I don't care what they were preseason ranked. I don't care what you thought they were supposed to be. Right now, they've got wins against Texas Tech. They've got wins against Iowa State. They've got wins against Oklahoma State. And those are better wins than 80% of the teams in the country. Those are better wins than anybody Alabama's beaten all year. Those are better wins than anybody Clemson's beaten all year, okay? Nobody has a resume like that other than – LSU, Penn State, not Ohio State. So that's that. Third, our fourth on the list, I've got Alabama. Alabama is still one of the cream of the crop teams in the country. They're one of the best programs in all of college football. With Tua, without Tua, they they this machine is still going to go. And I think that they're fourth based on their resume. Kind of like Clemson, but a little better than Clemson. Um, they had to go on the road to play AM. Clemson got AM at home. The games were about equal to me. Um, and then also the same thing with the rest of their schedule. They've played better teams than Clemson has played, and they're undefeated. But not nearly as good teams as number three, Penn State. Penn State's resume, the big wins that they've got are mounting up. Next week they get to go on the road to an undefeated Minnesota. That's going to be a crazy – or two weeks from now. That's going to be a crazy environment, and uh, they'll get tested again. What they're doing on defense is incredible. Offensively, they are as explosive as anybody with big plays. Um, if they hit them, it's over. They're going to score. Then you've got Ohio State and LSU. And I've got Ohio State, too. Absolutely no biases whatsoever in this. 
They have beaten the hell out of everybody. They finally beat the first good team on the schedule, which is Wisconsin. They've got one massive win. That's it. LSU's got three massive wins because they haven't beaten them as bad and maybe not have the eye test. I don't care about any of that stuff. You're trying to get out 1-0 every week. That's the objective. That's the goal. And and if LSU had played their schedule, I assure you they would have beaten those teams just as bad because they've beaten all the bad teams on their conference so far just as bad. They've beaten good teams that badly. They beat Florida that badly. And they're a top-10 team. Oh, yeah. And nobody will deny it. So – um, I, that's why they are one for me. They just have the better resume. And and we're picky nits when you're trying to figure one and two right now. does not matter. Uh, the question is going to be in the top four. Who who gets in? Because Penn State, now we're not going to have two conferences in the, power, in, in the playoff, which I wouldn't be upset with. I, I would absolutely not be upset with a one-loss Penn State or a one-loss Alabama or LSU in playing Ohio State and – and the winner of the Alabama LSU game. I actually think those are the four best teams in the country, even if those are the resumes. I, I know all of college football would lose their freaking mind, but hey, play better football. I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, well, we can't control our conference. We can't control the other teams we play. Listen, that argument didn't work for UCF. Hey, we can't control the fact that that we're in a weak conference and nobody else is good. Yeah, I mean, so, you, you got a point. All right, so to, to recap that, uh, my top 10, I've got number 10, Auburn. I've got number 9, Oklahoma. Number 8, Baylor. Number 7, Georgia. Number 6, Florida. Number 5, Penn State. Number 4, Clemson. Number 3, Alabama. Number 2, LSU. Number 1, Ohio State. For Chris, at number 10, he's got Minnesota. He's got number 9, Oregon. Number 8, Auburn. Number 7, Florida. Number 6, Clemson. Number 5, Baylor. Number 4, Alabama. Number 3, Penn State. Number 2, Ohio State. Number one, LSU. So you can find all of our picks, previews, videos, podcasts, etc. over at winningcureseverything.com. Of course, the show always brought to you by tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Chris, I, I think that's going to wrap it up, right? All right, man. All right, let's do it. That's the wrong one. Good Lord. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.